Have you ever watched the movie Robocop from 2014? Well, in the story, the protagonist is critically injured, and the only way he was able to survive is to remain in a robotic suit forever. Although the rest of his body was completely mutilated, his respiratory system and his brain were the only things still functioning. Isn't it fascinating to imagine how a police detective, who was severely injured and considered dead at first, is given a second chance with the aid of a robotic suit? And if that isn't remarkable enough, all he has to do to control the suit is to give it commands with his mind. So why is this insane concept important to think about right now? You'll see right now. Well, neurological disorders and spinal cord injury are amongst the most deadly conditions that anyone could suffer from, ranging from epilepsies to Alzheimer's, from stroke to paralysis. These disorders devastate the lives of nearly a billion people across the world. Each year, 7 million people die from neurological disorders, and over a quarter of a million Americans are currently handicapped from spinal cord injuries. Though brain disorders and spinal injuries don't appear as extreme in this situation in Robocop. People suffering from brain disorders and spinal injuries are often incapable of performing basic motor functions that we take granted for every day. Basic activities such as holding a piece of chocolate or even lifting your foot can be very strenuous for those with those disorders. However, the innovation of near technologies such as brain-computer interfaces have opened up possibilities of a better future. Neuroengineering has progressed so far in the last decade from enabling people with epilepsy to walk on their own, to allowing quadriplegics to control robotic limbs. There is no doubt that brain-computer interfaces have transformed the way we interact with the world today. The development of brain-computer interfaces started back in the year 1929 when a German researcher named Hans Berger developed electroencephalography, allowing researchers to record human brain activity with a device called the electroencephalogram. Yet our understanding of brain function, as well as the technology required to measure, process, and manipulate brain signals, were still far too limited at the time. The year 1998 marked a significant breakthrough in the field when researcher Philip Kennedy implanted the first brain-computer interface object into a human. This breakthrough paved the way to the founding of the company CyberKinetics in 2001. The CyberKinetics team designed a tailored brain-computer interface called the BrainGate, a device meant to aid people experiencing various neurological disorders and injuries. By 2006, a microelectrode array was implanted into the primary motor cortex of a man with complete tetraplegia. Using signals from the electrodes, a brain-computer interface enabled him to open his email, operate a TV, use a prosthetic hand, and perform simple actions with a robotic arm. And finally, improvements to the brain gate in 2013, just a few years ago, made it the first wireless brain-computer interface ever created. Right now, there are still many limitations to brain-computer interfaces that must be addressed before they can be implemented into our everyday lives. For instance, researchers are trying to develop ways to transfer more data from wireless brain-computer interfaces. Although current implants can transmit the equivalent of about 200 DVDs worth of data per day, that's not much in comparison to what the brain generates in executing even the simplest movement like moving a book. In addition to this, researchers are still working on making brain-computer interface systems more reliable, affordable, and accessible to the public. Scientists are also figuring out ways to apply brain-computer interfaces outside of the medical field. As an example, researchers here at the University of Washington have been testing the possibility of writing to another brain by using a method called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Researchers are working on transmitting images, signals, and messages from one brain to another using brain-computer interfaces. As more discoveries are made in the field of neuroengineering, those who suffer from neurological disabilities or spinal cord injuries will see soon more reliable and advanced technology available for the treatment. In addition to those suffering from disorders that will rely on BCIs to live, able-bodied individuals will soon be able to benefit from the neurological technologies as well.
For instance, features such as speed recognition in our devices has been widely used by the public. This has been a groundbreaking innovation and with enough research, we can take this a step further. Eventually, people will be able to control devices not just with their voices, but with the brain waves as well through the brain computer interface. This has the potential to aid people who are unable to use their arms or hands for device control while improving the lives and increasing the productivity of everyday people. Furthermore, developments in other fields of engineering will also allow neuroengineering to expand as well. The advancement of nanotechnology will certainly allow researchers to create smaller and far superior chips. This will make brain-computer interface less burdensome and thus more viable options for the public use. Currently, many of the brain-computer interface devices are tethered to bulky machines by ridiculous amounts of wiring. The implementation of chips that are smaller and more powerful will enable brain-computer interface devices to transfer data in a greater amount while allowing an end user to maintain their quality of life. As we've discussed before, brain-computer interface can potentially become one of the most effective solutions for restoring limb function to people suffering from motor disabilities. Brain-computer interfaces will be a vital component of medical diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation to patients. It is shown to be very successful in diagnosing patients with tumors and for treating severe tremors and epilepsy. It has also been useful in rehabilitating and even recovering those who have been experiencing stroke. In the future, brain-computer interfaces will be involved in a variety of other areas aside from medicine, including communication, productivity, entertainment, security, and economics. For example, perhaps we will be able to transmit images and messages to other people through non-invasive brain-computer interfaces. Brain-computer interfaces operate hands-free, bringing the ease and comfort to people through the mind-controlling of machines. Neuroengineering and our understanding of the brain has certainly progressed so far in the last few decades. But it is time to expand this research even further. There is still so much to be done and many improvements to be made. Together, we can provide the millions of people with disabilities the opportunity of a second chance in life. Just like the officer in Robocop. Do you want to have the scenes from Robocop come to life? Then let's make these science fiction concepts a reality.